Hi, in this demo, I'm going to show you how to quickly get started with HCP Boundary so you can have a good feel of the user experience and get you on your way to testing Boundary in your own environment. Our objective is to connect remote users to their infrastructure resources by using Boundary to secure that connection. All right, so let's get started. We'll start by deploying a new Boundary instance in the HashiCorp Cloud Platform, which we refer to as HCP for short. You can create a free account if you haven't already. Let's sign in. So now we're at the main HCP dashboard where many of the HashiCorp products are available as a managed service. We'll navigate and click on Get Started with Boundary. And we'll simply click Deploy Boundary. We'll provide a name for the Boundary instance, We'll just select the standard tier, which is perfectly fine for our getting started demo. And we'll also provide an admin username and password. Make a note of this since we'll be using it later to log on. And that's it. It takes about three to five minutes to create. So we'll return when it completes. Okay, so now we're back. The boundary instance is running as indicated in the status info. I can open up the web UI of my new cluster by clicking on open admin UI. Or I can also copy the URL provided here and paste it into a new browser tab. Next, I'll enter the admin username and password that I created earlier. Since this is a brand new deployment, it's going to automatically set up a few things for me to quickly test out Boundary. This part is optional and simply for testing purposes, and it's not something you would do in a production environment. It is going to create a new target for me. A target simply represents a resource that a remote user would want to connect to like a Linux host, a Windows host, a Kubernetes cluster, or a database. I do have an Ubuntu Linux host in my Azure environment, so I'm going to provide the IP address and the port for my Ubuntu host. Once again, this is for demo purposes, which is why we're going to use a public IP address of this Ubuntu host. In a production environment, we wouldn't expose this IP at all. For production environments, we'll create a separate video to show you how to configure this using a boundary proxy. But for now, this will do. Now we're going to paste this IP address into this field. And since we'll be SSHing into this Linux host, we'll use port 22. We'll click Save, and it'll generate the target resource for us. Let's click Done and go see what was created. Now it takes us into the admin UI to the Target tab. But let's take a step back and see how we got to this tab. I'm going to click on the top level org view. As you can see, it created a sample org for me. An org is just a way for you to organize your resources into logical groupings. So for example, you may create a new org for each cloud environment like AWS, Azure, GCP, or an on-prem data center. If we click on the sample SecOps org that was created for us, we see projects. A project is simply another level of subgroupings. For example, if you created an Azure org, you can then create a project for each region. It's entirely up to you on how you want to organize your resources. If we now click on the sample project and go to the target tab, we can see the test target that was created for us earlier, along with the IP address. Now let's connect to this target as an end user. We'll need to search and download the desktop client for this. Select one of the results from the search. Then click on Boundary and select Install. At the Install page, scroll down and select the desktop client that's appropriate for your operating system. Launch your desktop client and enter the Boundary instance's URL, which can be located from the HCP portal. Log in with the admin username and password that was created early on. So now we can test the end user experience. So let's try to connect to this test target, which is the Ubuntu VM running in Azure. So click on connect. And now it shows that we are connected to this target and it provides us with the IP address and the port that we can use to SSH into this. So we can also change this and get the actual SSH command, which we can then copy and you can paste this into your favorite terminal, or there's a built-in terminal here that you can also use. So I'm going to paste it, and the login name is actually Ubuntu, so I'll change this to Ubuntu. Then it's going to ask for the 
password. And now I'm in. So simple as that to connect. So we just demoed the end user experience when connecting to a target. But as you saw, the user still needed to know the username and password and had to enter it manually. What if you wanted a passwordless experience, which is way more secure? Let's set that up using credential injection. So going back to our admin UI, I'm going to start with my org, select the org, select the project, and then go to credential store where I'll store my static username and password for my Ubuntu host. So I'll create a new credential store. I'll give it a name. For the simple demo, we have a static username and password, but you can also choose to use Vault to dynamically generate a short-lived credential for your Ubuntu host as well. Now let's click Save. Now that we have a new credential store, let's add our static username and password into it. Select New, give it a name, and then I'll select the type, which is username and password. I can also select a key pair or a JSON blob. Ubuntu is the username. Also enter the password and then click Save. Now let's create a new target in addition to the previous test target that we had already. I'll give it a new name, select the protocol that I want to use, which is SSH. I'll enter the same IP address as we had before. And then we'll click Save. So now to inject passwords automatically for this target, we'll scroll back up. We'll select Inject Application Credentials. We'll add a new one, and we'll select that credential store that we created earlier. And so we'll click Add. And now credentials for this target will be injected automatically. So what we'll do is go back to our desktop client. We have that session that we had earlier. If I click on Targets, we'll see that there is now a new target that appears. This is the one we just created with credential injection. We'll click on Connect, and it's automatically connected, just like before, but if we go into the shell, this time it doesn't ask for username and password. The username and password is automatically injected into the session for us. So as you can see, this is automatically done by boundary, so the user doesn't have any type of credential they need to manage. It's a passwordless experience. So that's a quick demo of how to get started with HCP Boundary. I highly recommend you check out our many other tutorials at developer.hashcorp.com forward slash boundary forward slash tutorials. Thanks for watching.